Today we're looking at text-to-text -text connections. Recently I was hanging out with some friends and they mentioned a new video game they're all playing. Portal. Welcome to the Aperture Science Enrichment Center. Let's look at some of the challenges you'll face as a test participant. You may be required to perform simple tasks such as locating an exit. These simple tasks may be supplemented with insurmountable obstacles. Thanks to the Aperture Science handheld portal device, the impossible is easy. Let's look at a real-world example. Certain objects may be vital to your success. If at first you don't succeed, you fail, and the test will be terminated. Wednesday, remember our motto, there's a hole in the sky through which things can fly. At the Enrichment Center, we believe that a highly motivated test subject can carry out rather complex tasks while enduring the most intense pain. So in case you don't make it through the testing, goodbye. This reminded me of the book Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. The novel is science fiction about a future where alien bugs attacked Earth. To fight back, humanity is sending their kindergartners through sixth graders to war school in space. Ender is a six-year-old genius and commander of a student army, and this is his first day in the battle room. They filed clumsily into the battle room, like children in a swimming pool for the first time, clinging to the handholds along the side. No gravity was frightening, disorienting. They soon found that things went better if they didn't use their feet at all. Worse, the suits were confining. It was harder to make precise movements, since the suits bent just a bit slower, resisted a bit more than any clothing they had ever worn before. Ender gripped the handhold and flexed his knees. He noticed that along with the sluggishness, the suit had an amplifying effect on movement. It was hard to get them started, but the suit's legs kept moving, and strongly after his muscles had stopped. Give them a push this strong, and the suit pushes back with twice the force. I'll be clumsy for a while. Better get started. So, still grasping the handhold, he pushed off strongly with his feet. Instantly he flipped around, his feet flying over his head, and landed flat on his back against the wall. The rebound was stronger, it seemed, and his hands tore loose from the handhold. He flew across the battle room, tumbling over and over. For a sickening moment he tried to retain his old up-and-down orientation, his body attempting to right itself, searching for the gravity that wasn't there. Then he forced himself to change his view. He was hurtling toward a wall. That was down. And at once he was able to control himself. He wasn't flying, he was falling. This was a dive. He could choose how he would hit the surface. I'm going too fast to catch a hold and stay, but I can soften the impact. I can fly off at an angle if I roll when I hit and use my feet. It didn't work at all the way he had planned. He went off at an angle, but it was not the one he had predicted. Device. Okay, and this is going to open a portal between two places. The game is sort of futuristic. Um, and obviously is to solve problems. Okay, the next thing I've seen um, is that there is kind of um, a weird perception thing. Um, we can change the rules, such as gravity, to get what we want. I mean, you know what, actually, I think I might take this element here, that it's futuristic, and I'm going to add it again down here also. Um, it's a game, 
but we're warned that you might not live through it. All right. I'm looking at Ender's Game. The, and we don't have any kind of device. I mean, there is. There's a and there's an element to that, but we didn't hear that in our clip. What we did hear about is the battle room and Ender's suit. Um, it doesn't move very well. Um, things like movements are slowed down. Um, but it also made Ender weightless. Um, but it's actually kind of a protection, so oh, uh, let's just leave it there. There's more to it than that, and I'm thinking of beyond our clip. Excuse me. Um, but we also have a change in rules, too. The battle room has no gravity, and there don't seem to be any rules. There are handholds and there are places that Ender can bounce off of, um, but he's not really given any kind of explanation to where he is. He's just kind of chucked into this weightless room. And it's also futuristic. It's also a game. Um, but the game in the end is to prepare people for war. So what connections do I have? The technology is very futuristic um, and it solves problems. Sorry, when making a screencast, my typing gets really bad. Um, for instance, it either opens a door or trains for war. My connection here, we've got some interesting disorientation stuff. Um, the rules of gravity have changed. Spelling issue. Um, and it's disoriented. I'm really kind of embarrassed that I cannot spell properly. My apologies. Um, and then our connection here is pretty obvious because I've made two things that are very similar. It's a futuristic game um, that might kill you. Our connections are kind of clear here. And perhaps here you're actually seeing other connections. If we're talking about futuristic games that might kill the participants. Anyone read or seen the movie or the book um, Hunger Games? If you're talking about gravity um, being disorienting, have you ever seen the film Apollo 13 where they're upside down and sick because of it? Um, and of course we've seen plenty of times in our own lives when technology has solved problems around us. Um, everything from antivirus software on our computers to, oh, I don't know, online school for chance. We have a lot of connections we're able to make between these things. As you're looking for connections, they don't have to be intense, down, and dirty. They can sometimes be kind of surface or snorkel level connections. But remember that your connections do need to hold up. You need to be able to prove where they come from from both texts. If you have questions, please contact your teacher. We're here to help.